So today I'm just going to be doing a quick comparison of these two gimbals. To my left, which is your right, I have the DJI Osmo Mobile 2. And to my right, which is your left, I have the Zhiyun Smooth Q gimbal. So a little background of my experience with gimbals. I've owned the very first generation DJI Osmo Mobile. And um, then I got this gimbal, which is the Smooth Q. And then I also decided to try the Osmo Mobile 2 because um, there's actually some features that I missed on it. So that's actually why I have these two gimbals. Unfortunately, I will be returning the DJI Osmo Mobile 2 because the one that they sent me was defective on the very first day that I received it in the mail. What the hell? So it's going gonna get sent back to them. But I figured I'll make this video first before I, I do that. So I figure I don't even really need two gimbals anyway, so I am just going to keep the smooth cue even though there are some things I like more about the Osmo Mobile 2, and I'll get to that in a second. So here are the things that I like more about the Zion Smooth Q. So for one, it's actually a bit lighter, not by much. You really won't notice the difference unless you're holding them both in the same hand, but it is, it is lighter and it's also smaller in the hand. The Osmo Mobile 2 does feel better. It has like a better feel in the hand, but this one is smaller and it is lighter. Um, the second reason why I like the Zion Smooth Q more than the Osmo Mobile 2 is you have an optional remote that you can use to control it. So you can use this remote. It works very much like the joystick that's already on there. You have a joystick on here. There's a record button. Actually, you know what? Does the record button even work? Yeah, the record button actually doesn't even work because the thing with this is this thing can only connect to one Bluetooth device at a time. So you can either connect it to your phone or you can connect it to the remote. So the only thing that actually works on this remote is the joystick and these other controls you'll actually have to use on the actual gimbal itself. And the reason why this remote even has those extra controls is because there's other gimbals that will allow you to use them. But in this specific scenario, it's only really the joystick that's useful for controlling the smooth cue and not really the other features. Um, another feature that the uh, Zion Smooth Q has over the Osmo Mobile 2 is the joystick, when you move it, it can actually move the uh, gimbal diagonally. So as you can see, you can hit down, down and up, and it'll actually move the gimbal diagonally. Where on the Osmo Mobile 2, even if you go diagonal, it's either either just gonna go up, it, up and down or left and right. You can't go diagonally on the joystick. It's only those options. You can't use a diagonal option. So that is another um, advantage that the Smooth Q has over the Osmo Mobile 2. It's not something I know, I, I don't even know if you're ever gonna really use it, but it's just nice to have more features, really. Another advantage that the Smooth Q has, the third advantage that I think it has, is it has a selfie mode, not like the one on the Osmo Mobile 2 where it flips the screen. This one actually turns the camera 360 degrees if you press mode three times, which I'll actually demonstrate right now. And they'll actually flip the camera around, which is kind of a cool feature to have. I didn't really use it as much as I thought I would, but again, it's actually a nice feature to have. Unfortunately, on the Oslo Mobile 2, you don't have this option, and the reason why is because the uh, pan motor won't even flip 360 degrees. It stops at a certain point. And when somebody asked DJI why they did that, they said that if it flips all the way around in 360, it's going to wear out the motors faster or something like that. So that's why they decided to not have this section flip 360 degrees. But because of that, you don't have that feature where you can flip the gimbal around 360 by hitting the mode button three times. So that's another advantage that goes to the Smooth Q. And the final advantage that I think the Smooth Q has, there's probably a couple more, but off the top of my head, this is what I could think of, um, is it's also cheaper. This one, um, you can buy it for $100 US now, which in Canada is like around $130. The Osmo Mobile 2, on the other hand, goes for $130 US, and that's like around $170 Canadian dollars. So that's actually pretty significant when you look at the price of the gimbal. So it's $100, this one's $130. That's 30% 30 more in, in price that you're paying for the Smooth Q for essentially the same gimbal. Now, let's talk about the advantages of the Osmo Mobile 2 over the Smooth Q. Um, the first advantage that I think it has is it's a DJI product and it uses the DJI, it uses the DJI Go app which in my experience is a lot better for doing certain things. So one of the examples that I can think of is the zoom feature. When you use the zoom on the software for the Osmo Mobile, it's a really smooth zoom. It, it looks really good. It's like actually a usable zoom that I would actually use. Where on the Zion Smooth Q, if you're try to use this um, zoom, it's like the most jittery zoom I've ever seen. It's actually not even usable in my opinion. I never use the zoom on the Zion Smooth Q because 
it's just going to make the video look bad. It's not cinematic. You're just not going to be able to use the footage if you're using the zoom feature on the Science Mood Q. Now, I am using it on a Samsung Galaxy S7. I don't know if it has better experience on an iPhone, but from my experience on a Samsung Galaxy S7, the zoom is extremely jittery and unusable. On the Osmo Mobile, on the other hand, the, smooth, the zoom is really good, which is why I like it more. The second feature that the Osmo Mobile 2 has is it actually works with other software as well. So Filmic Pro, the Filmic Pro app, if you want to use that app, if you use the Osmo Mobile 2, it has it works really well with that app. Um, yeah, you can open up the app. There's like a setting there to, to pair the two devices together. And once they're paired, they work perfectly. Like all the features work. You can hit the record button. It's going to record. You can hit the, uh, the selfie button and it'll switch to like the front facing camera. So that's another advantage that the Osmo Mobile 2 has is it has that uh, compatibility with other software like Filmic Pro. Final advantage that I think the Osmo Mobile has over the Smooth Q, and it's one that actually, it's the whole reason why I even got the Osmo Mobile in the, in the first place is because I was so used to having the first Osmo, is um, when it's in the follow mode, now it's kind of confusing because follow mode on the Osmo and follow mode on this are com two completely different things. Um, when I mean follow mode, what I'm saying is the, the, ca the, get the camera is going to follow your hand wherever you move. So if I go up, it's, it's going to pan up. If I go down, it's going to pan down. If I pan left, it's going to pan left. And if I pan right, it's going to pan right. That's what I mean by follow mode. So on the Osmo Mobile 2, you can actually, or actually both Osmos, it doesn't even matter which one. You can have it at an angle like this. So see how I have it at an angle? And I can also have it, while it's in that angle, I can have it on the follow mode. So I can be holding it like this. If I want it to pan up, I can just go up, I can go down. And yeah, that's what it does. So yeah, basically it's the only gimbal that can do it. The Smooth Q actually doesn't do it. Let me actually show you how the Smooth Q works. Okay, so right now it is in follow mode. But if I want to put it at an angle, you won't be able to do it because it's in follow mode. It's going to follow this gimbal no matter what. So if I put it up, it's going to be like that. So I can't have it at an angle like this. See, because it's just going to want to point downwards. You can't use the joysticks to ch change it either. You can't use the software to change it. No matter what positioning this thing is at, that's the positioning that this camera is going to be at, which is kind of annoying because I got used to it on the original Osmo and then the Smooth Q can't even do it. So basically if you're using follow mode on this, you always have to keep this part straight and you can't have it at an angle like that. Only the Osmo can do that. So that was another advantage that I thought the Osmo Mobile 2 had over the uh, Smooth Q. But yeah, so that was my pretty much my comparison of these two gimbals. Which one do I like more? Personally, I like the Osmo Mobile 2 more. And the reason why is because it just feels better. This, like I said, the software works better. The features that I actually do use are on the Osmo. So like the zoom, I actually do try to use that sometimes. And it works better on the Osmo Mobile 2. That, that follow feature that I was talk, talk, t telling you guys about, where it follows the uh, gimbal even at an angle, that's another feature I use, and that's on the Osmo Mobile 2. Um, even though the Smooth Q does have advantages, like for example, this remote, I actually don't use this remote as much as I thought I would. So even though it does have that advantage, it's not something that I actually use. So it's kind of pointless. Um, the moving diagonally thing, again, it's like not something I really use that often. So even though it has that advantage, it's just not something I use. So that's why I like the Osmo Mobile 2 more. One thing that I think that DJI should really add back to this gimbal is that rosette mount, which the original Osmo Mobile had. The trigger, I can live without that. I don't really need it. But that rosette mount, I think that's like so important. I don't really know why they took it out. That rosette mount allowed you to do like a lot of things. So if you wanted to like mount an iPhone to your Osmo Mobile on the side, you can do that. And the reason why that's important is because let's say I wanted to mount like a GoPro to the camera, then I can have the GoPro on the camera and then I can have my phone showing the feed from the GoPro and it's just showing on that rosette mount. But without that rosette mount, you can't really do it. You're just gonna have to put the GoPro on here and kind of guess where what the what the footage from the GoPro is looking like and you can't even really see it in real time. Yeah, there were actually other advantages that that rosette mount had, to, had as well. It was in the middle of the gimbal, so if you were like to mount it to a bicycle or something like that, it just it just mounted a lot better. Uh, I like that they added the tripod mount at the bottom, but they should have still kept that rosette mount in there in my opinion. And DJI, if you're listening to this, please add that rosette mount into your next Osmo Mobile and I'll probably buy it if you guys do that. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That was my comparison of these two gimbals, the DJI Osmo Mobile 2 and the Zion Smooth Q. 
hopefully you guys found something interesting in it and it helped you with your buying decision of the two again this one is cheaper and they're both pretty much the same gimbal but there's like little minor features that i do like about this but then again this also has a has its advantages as well in the end i'm still keeping this one which is the smooth cue because i already have one i don't really need two gimbals and this one i'm returning unfortunately even though i like it more because they sent me a defective one if they didn't send me a defective one i'd probably end up keeping it but i can't really keep it because it's defective and the motor's work is broken right now it seems like it's working but trust me it's doesn't work. Anyways, hopefully you guys found this video useful and I'll see you guys in the next video if I ever make another one. We'll see.